with Ripple making new partnerships and also announcing that it's going to be an IPO in the near future, what is to become of the XRP price? Stay tuned and find out. What's up everybody, it's Cashflow Nexus, your favorite chart analyst, back again giving you the latest and greatest updates on the financial markets. And today we will be taking a closer look at XRP. If you, and if you are new to this channel and you like what you see in here and feel compelled to sub, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications for future content. That being said, we're going to jump into today's list, starting off with scripture because God comes first on this channel. Then we're going to look at Ripple to become an IPO. Then we're going to look at the partnership with BitCub, and then we're gonna end it with technical analysis on XRP. So starting off and with scripture, coming out of Proverbs 11 and two, when pride cometh, then cometh shame, but with the lowly is wisdom. So when you think of someone with pride, these are the characteristics that someone with pride usually typically has. They're usually selfish, excessively about self, too much self-love thinking higher than what they really are and when you think of someone lowly you're thinking about someone that's humble meek free from self-assertive pride modest and showing self uh subservience so when you compare the two uh god is looking at people and comparing and saying, okay, this person has pride issues, this person is lowly and humble. So there's a scripture that goes along with this, that God resists the prideful, and he also, you know, he exalts the humble. So here's uh, coming out of James 4 and 6, but he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, good res God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. So this is the thing that we need to learn. If you look, if you read most of Proverbs 11 uh, and finish the book up uh, from Proverbs 11 and finish it, you notice that he's comparing the difference between someone with pride and somebody that's humble and that he blesses people that are humble. And he's, just, don't get me wrong, he blesses everybody. He's a just God. But you notice that he, he he really, you know, has exalts the ones that are humble and he resists the people that are prideful. So this is something that I think people should de uh, definitely take into consideration. Evaluate yourself and, you know, if any of those characteristics of pride, you know, reflect about you, let, you know, look, do some soul searching and, you know, praying on it and you know seek some change about yourself because i know that sometimes i have some pride issues and i think everybody has some pride issues uh it may be small in some details in some areas but everybody has some form of pride some more excessive than others uh me i have pride in my work that i do and i do have pride when it comes to technical analysis if people notice <laughs> Uh, but anyway, moving on uh, to the Ripple becoming an IPO. I had said this on Twitter. Uh, I said, where do you sit? Are you happy or disappointed Ripple is looking to become an IPO? So let me go ahead and refresh this and get some people's thoughts. So here is what, here's my thoughts, first of all. I said, you know, that it eliminates the idea of XRP becoming a security, which is going to help XRP growth, XRP's growth in the long term. And I also said uh, this would, uh, you know, in my opinion, would have to increase people. This the price would have to increase because if you think about it, if XRP's price increases and Ripple's asset is doing well. A lot of people are going to invest in their their asset and also invest into Ripple as well. So the uh, it becoming an IPO and uh, XRP goes hand in hand. So I think it'll work out uh, both ways. Uh, someone's had said, 
they think it'll be a good idea. Darren Tower said this. Uh, Towner said this. So, oops. Uh, let's see. I think XRP will do well after the IPO because of retail investors. This is coming from XRP Pizza Time. Uh, he said, I think XRP will do uh, well after IPO because of retail investors. Let's say shares are trading at $20, which is be insane. But XRP is trading at 20 cents. XRP is more attractive because of the potential return ratio. Just my thoughts. That's what, was what he said. So I gave that a heart. Um, Susan had said, let's see, where is it at? Because I got so many replies here. Uh, let's see. Here's a good one. She said that she spoke with someone at work with that has made and lost millions in a situation like this, which is interesting because I don't know any situation that's similar to what's going on now, but you know, it's good to ask questions. Uh, let's see. And he said it was as soon as it goes public and price rises, uh, XRP, he said to sell XRP because it'll crash. You know, he's saying this based off experience. Um, I'm not sure, but it's something to be, you know, be mindful of because if it does rise like it's supposed to and people, you know, get it and it's a fluctuation of people just jumping in and jumping in and jumping in and, you know, FOMO is going to move price too because people are going to be fearful of missing out on an opportunity like XRP. So once that happens, uh, it is safe to say that price could dramatically drop right when it hits a certain amount but that's just uh you know speculation right now so if anything it's it's all gonna be a waiting game at this point and we'll see what happens now let's look at the partnership with the uh, crypto exchange bitco which is a thailand crypto exchange so I'm not going to read the whole thing. I will put the article in the description if you are if you even care to read it. Uh, shout out to uh, XRP News for giving me this uh, article and tagging me in this article. I'm going to read it today. So I'm going to get to the meat of this. So the, the CEO of BitCub, and I don't know how to say his name, but it's like top to right that's what, that's what it looks like but he says the exchange is now ripple's official partner in the country and will help power cross-border xrp transactions the ceo also added ripple is one of the key players for banks to realize significant benefits ripple is to establish an into institution cross-border payment with xrp an open source for access and participation in the public sector of XRP cash flow, a standalone digital currency used to facilitate transactions on the Ripple network. Uh, BitCub, Ripple's official exchange partner in Thailand, is joining the RippleNet program. We are on a mission of humanizing blockchain chain experience, the blockchain experience where people will inherently utilize cryptocurrencies as a transaction protocol on the back end in order to receive as well as transfer money at a fraction of the cost across the globe within early next year global money remittance at a much cheaper rate would be feasible so that's something that uh you know to take into consideration and you know i it dawned on me because a lot of people been a lot of people that are bitcoin fans uh this popped into my head just for some reason i was thinking about it because a lot of people say banks are going to fail let's say banks do fail the new banks are going to be crypto exchanges if you think about it uh you put your money's going to be on the exchange just like a bank <laughs> so it's going crypto exchanges up may be the new bank these days and then you'll have your digital wallet to you know move money around anyway who knows how you know if we'll still have cards it might be something you just hold in front of the you know the uh, like a screen and you just scan it and make your payment we don't know how payments is going to work when uh but i'm assuming cards are still going to be around but 
this is something to consider as well. Uh, I think it'll be interesting in the long term. I think about you know five years from now we'll really see where this is gonna head and stop pushing. Uh, now to the meat of this. So we're gonna jump into the technical analysis, which is what we all been waiting for. And I hope you guys enjoy what I have for you guys. All right, stay tuned. All right, you guys, we are looking at XRP now on the weekly time frame. We're going to do a top down analysis starting from the weekly all the way down to the 15 minute time frame. So what I'm looking at here, uh, I use the Ichimoku system. If you're not familiar with it, Definitely pause the video now and go to my uh, description box and check out the content that I have on how to read and use Ichimoku in, in the Forex and also the crypto space. All right. So that being said, we already know that XRP has been in a crazy downtrend since 2017. Uh, you know, this cloud is showing that if anything's underneath the cloud, it shows that price is bearish so we are still bearish at this point until we get above the cloud but that could always change at any point in time because it's xrp if we do get another crazy bull run expect a burst through the cloud without you know hesitation uh looking at it we we do see this blue line here which is a called the kijensen it's a dynamic support or resistance and in this case since prices below uh kijensen uh it's acting as a dynamic resistance so it's a resistance that moves with price so we do see that it has you know bounced off of 25 cents at this level to be pr more precise 25 cents and a half uh right now it looks like it's trying to bounce again to the downside but if we look at it from here we have been making a move to the upside we had a hammer uh, candlestick pattern if you're not familiar with price action trading uh, this is a hammer stick candle and how you would trade it you would trade it once price broke above this top part of the wick and take that trade to the upside now had you caught that trade when that had happened you would have you would be up 28 percent right now and that's not a bad price honestly that's phenomenal uh but right now we're trying we need to break above 25 cent and a half for higher prices and once we break 25 cents we are going to see a 30 percent uh 30 cent price uh, what i am worried about right now is this current formation that we see in the market we have to close you know higher than this price right now because right now this red line which is called the tinkinson is acting as dynamic support so you see that we're bouncing between the blue line and the red line here so once you, i'm gonna go ahead and box this because this is going to be how it, the market's going to look so this formation is very important and I'm going to have it only on the weekly time frame. So this formation is very important. Um, we had a bullish candle, as we could see. And this right here is showing signs of, uh, you know, this is showing res uh, resistance right here. So price bounced off of this already and it closed here. So price opened back up here, tried to push higher, but it failed and it came down. So if this candle, this weekly candle closes any lower or about where it's at right now, this is going to be bad for XRP because the higher time frames speak for the, the market. So if this is called a dark cloud cover, if it if it closes in this position, a dark cloud cover is a formation in the market that moves when a price moves up and hits a resistance and then the, it's a you have a bullish candle in the uh candle right after closes 50 percent or more than you know 50 percent or more uh, of the prior candle as you see that it's well beyond 50 percent of this prior candle uh, if we look at it 
fifty percent of this candle would be like about right here, and you see we already breached that, so that's not a good sign. If this ha does happen, we will see some lower prices in XRP. Uh, how low? Let me see if I could give you. I'm going to give you guys two scenarios right now. I'm gonna give you the bearish scenario, so bear with me. So here would be our end wave a bearish end wave to the downside that will push price you know into you know lower regions like 11 cents and that's what we do not want especially if it makes that full wave um, let's see uh, right here we would have to break this level anyway to even get to you know those these lower levels here so this is a bearish scenario that could happen uh it's all going to depend on how this weekly candle closes too by the way so don't you know for uh get upset about it um this here if we don't break say if it, it does close as this we still have to get past this level here to even break down so this is the a level b level c level d level to even be considered a N wave, price has to break the B level right here to push prices further to the downside. Now, price looks like it does not want to do that right now. It looks like it wants to, you know, it, right now it looks like if we do break down to this level, this is going to be a resist uh, support level that will be tested. So we may range here. Let me go ahead and mark it. We may get a range like this and then we may start to move to the upside that's one possible scenario all right so going down to the daily time frame let's go there so we could get a bullish end wave on off of the daily time frame which you see is here now let's say because right now I do like the RCI on the daily time frame. Uh, it's showing that you, this is the trend right now, which is moving to the upside. And it also broke the zero level, which is showing that we are now bullish. So we can look for bullish positions or you know, positions that will take us up. But here's the signal line here. This is what I'm you know, kind of worried about right here we need to break the zero line needs to break above the the negative 70 in the negative 80 area once we get back above this line here i would start looking for buying positions but right now it's not a time to buy until we get above this level this red line gets above this level this green line here if we do continue to see the lower prices as you see if it starts you know doing this action the, the red line starts consolidating then we'll see this do a u-turn and start coming back to the downside and that's what i don't want to see but right now we do look bullish off the daily time frame we also have a bullish future cloud what could also happen right now that i see potentially happening is we could also range from this level so we could bounce off here because we are showing strong signs of rejection off this first candle uh off the last candle if you look at it it was a rejection at the kijensen which is a support if you like take this blue line off this flat line was the uh, support area it rejected right now currently it's breaking through so that's one thing that i'm taking into consideration as well so looking at that i want to you know evaluate how low we could go we might even come as low as 21 cents again if not lower or we might even come down to this bottom part of the cloud which will also act as a support so we have support at this 21 cent level and support at this 19 cent level and we could make a end wave and move to the upside like that and that will give Chiku spend some time to, you know, wiggle its way through the cloud, the cloud anyway. So that's one thing I'm also considering. Uh, 
uh, going down to the four hour time frame, we are bearish. But right now it's showing signs that it wants to price wants to attract to this blue line here. Whenever pr this line is flat, price usually wants to attract upward to it or downward to it, depending on where the price is at. So we see rejection and moved up higher. Uh, right now, it looks like price is moving lower. Maybe it's going to try to shake people out. Maybe it's going to try to uh, push even lower. That's, you know, like I said, this is going to be our area of support. If I go back to the daily, let me go ahead and put this level as a support as well. So coming back here, this will be our next level of support if we do break this level. So I will be watching that. Uh, RCI is showing that we are bearish so we could come back up here and then reverse or we might just reverse right here and come back down so that's one thing I'm also looking at because you have to remember it and when you're inside the cloud on with the Ichimoku system this shows signs of turbulence which is not a good sign in the market you want to that's why people a lot of people don't trade with inside within the cloud because it's a lot of turbulence and a lot of uh, moving like you see here a lot of people expect the prices to go up but it you know dropped down which it dropped 34 percent so we could get that type of move too which will take us down into this region here so that's what i'm looking at looking at it at the one hour time frame uh it's bearish right now it looks like prices you know dropping uh looks like we're about to get a bearish tk cross as well well when these red when the red and the blue line cross one another, we got a bullish one, then immediately had a uh, coming down and it's bouncing off this level, bouncing off the fractal level, which is also acting as a support, not as acting as a resistance. If we zone it here, yeah, about right there, you see that this area is acting as resistance. Uh, let's see, it blinked for a second. All right, there we go. And here, it show, since the green line is underneath the negative 70 and ne negative 80 level, price is also sh showing that we are still in a downtrend. Uh, the signal line broke down through the, neg the zero line, so that's also showing that price is also acting as uh this price is pushing down we have an engulfing candle right here as well so this might be a good sell-off opportunity for the short term to probably around this level and this level uh since it is an engulfing candle i would suggest that price move even lower than that if that's the case uh let's see looking at it up the 15 minute time frame and to close it out it's showing that we are bearish. Uh, we broke the cloud, so that's bearish. Tinkinson and Kijinson is bearish, pointing both down to the downside. We have a future cloud, which is dark. That's turn. That's Kumo Twist. That's turning into a bearish cloud. So we may get this action here. Start getting blue, a blue cloud forming, and also. Chiku span is underneath price and it's starting to break through the cloud. So once Chiku span breaks through the cloud, it's going to drop. And you see that it's dropping now. Uh, the thing is, I don't want to jump in prematurely because we still got four minutes for this candle to close. You always want to be patient and watch the market before it does what it does. Uh, so that being said, this is my analysis for the day. Uh, I was a little bit was bullish until I saw the when I until I did top down analysis. Right now I'm leaning toward the bearish side of things because of this right here and because of the last three time frames that we looked at. That being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this technical analysis in this video. Comment and subscribe and let me know your thoughts. And God bless you guys. All right. Stay tuned for the next. Peace. Mm -hmm.